this morning and I pray to the most high The sun is shining so bright I'm blessed to live this life Shalom sisters, shalom, shalom. On the ground, the Lord praises to you. How about you now? Shai, a shalom to those keeping. In this video, we're gonna do this one going into um, purging, bring forth more fruit, okay? And we're just gonna get right into it. I wanna get 1 Peter 4 and 11. And it reads, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Yahweh. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which Yahweh giveth, that Yahweh and all things may be glorified through Yahweh Shah Mashiach, to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we want to speak the oracles of the Lord. Everything we do should be for the Lord in sincerity, and everything we say should be blessed of the Lord, not out of our own belly. So I'm calm. Because it is of the most high that we're able to do the things, and able to get on here and make videos, and use our talents. It is all of the Lord. So we give all our praises to the most high. We have our Shema Shalom, which means forever. Hebrews 10 and 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So everything we're doing, you know, I'm on here doing this to provoke my sister's good works. You know, we should be provoking one of our good works to the times we have our Shema Shalom. Um, but con, so this video is going to purge and bring forth more fruit. And we all go through this purging, um, cleansing in this truth. All of us, That's a good boy. we all go through that in this walk and, um, it's, it's to help us be better. It's honestly to help us be better. And we just got to take it on the chin. We have to understand that the most high loves us and he wants better for us. And that's why we go through it. Um, but, um, you know, I got my little notes, my little notes pad. Our first thing on top. So, sisters, grab your notepad, your pen, um, or take your notes on your phone, however you want to do it. But let's write these things down. Through this pretty have our Shaman Shah. So, the first thing I want to touch on is we have to understand why we go through affliction. And I want sisters to remember that not all affliction is like judgment or punishment. You know, some affliction is, um, that's just that the good old, first of all, all of it is good. But, not all affliction is punishment. Not all affliction is because you went off or it's judgment or it's punishment. You know, not all affliction is that. At the end of the day, it's all, it's all to help us be better. But um, we, we go through affliction because it's to help us be better. So I want us to understand that first. And um, my other one and his brethren, they hosted a call on Sunday. And something that stood out to me was you have to be on fire to go through the fire. And I kind of was like, mm. and so the most high, he had me, I don't remember what I was doing. This is about a week and a half ago. I don't know what I was doing. Well, I obviously was reading, but like I was in John, but I wasn't reading the book of John, but I came across John 15 and two through the spirit. And let's read John 15 and two. Oh, I remember I was doing an exhortation on bearing fruits, bearing good fruit. And John 15 and 2 popped up in my mind. And so I read it and I was like, wait a minute. And I understood, I finally like understood what that was saying. Because I've been in this walk for two years. And John 15 and 2, I, it was saying something totally different. And it's like, I finally was kind of understanding what it was saying. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. I never really understood the last part up until a week and a half ago. And I was like, wait a minute. Let's read it again. And every branch that beareth fruits, he purged it that it may bring forth more fruit. So when we look at the definition of purge, what does it mean? Rid someone or something of an unwanted quality or feeling. Remove, get rid of, clear out, expulsion, discharge. So it's to rid us from unwanted qualities, unwanted traits. So when it said that, I was like, wow, every branch that bear fruit, he purged that it may bring forth more fruit. It finally clicked in my head. Sometimes, most of the time, we go through affliction so we can be better and bring forth more fruit and bring forth more righteous attributes. We go through affliction so we can be better. 
And it finally clicked. It finally clicked. I was like, dang, I praise it up. So it says every branch that bear fruit, he purged it that it may bring forth more. When you think about bearing fruit, if you're bearing good fruits in this thing, and if you're doing what's well pleasing to the Most High, He's gonna send you through affliction. He's gonna humble you down. He's gonna chastise you. He's gonna break you down to your very last just to bring you back up, build you back up, just so you can bear more fruit. So finally click, that's why we go through affliction. We go through affliction so we can bear more fruit, so we can be better, so we can be a better woman, be the be the woman he's called us to be, be the daughter he's called us to be, be the servant he's called us to be. That's why we go through affliction. And of course, we also go through affliction when we're going off, you know. Some affliction is judgment, but not all affliction is judgment. So if I feel like it finally clicked in my brain that when we bear fruit, we get purged, so they bring forth more. So affliction is not a bad thing. It says every branch that bears fruit, I'm, it, it just, it's a beautiful precept. He purges it that it may bring forth more. So think about it. When you're walking in the ways of the Most High and you bear good fruits of this thing, He's going to send you through that perf. He's going to send you through that process where you got to get cleansed, where you got to get rid of all these unwanted traits he gonna cleanse you from these demons he gonna cleanse you from these quality these nasty he's gonna rid you of the unwanted qualities that you care he's gonna rid you of those spirits that's not of him he's gonna rid you of those tricks that's not of him so that you may be better so that you may bring forth more fruit and it finally clicked that's like call you have shy so that is why we go through affliction so we can be better regardless of his punishment regardless if it's not it's to help us be better because everything works together for our good Romans 8 28 and everything's to help us align and be better women at the end of the day so now that we have that out of the way um I want to get this. So we clicked in my brain. The Lord, he sees something in us. Sirach 2 and 5. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace for adversity. So we go through adversity because the most I see is as acceptable. He sees something in us and he wants to say we're worthy of that kingdom. He wants to say we're worthy of that everlasting life. You know, so it's to try us. <clears throat> it's to try us. Now, I'm just going to get precepts. This is Psalms 94 and verse 12. And most of these precepts are kind of put up on table, so I'm just going to go just go through precepts. Psalms 94 and 12. Blessed is the man whom thou chasteness, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law. So when I read that, to me, it resonates with my spirit. You know, when we go through affliction, when we go through it, it's to help, it's to teach us, it's to help us. It's to teach us how um, how we can be better. It's to, it's to humble us down. It's to teach us, you know, ways we can increase in, um, ways we're struggling. It's to teach us. It's to help us. And blessed are those that the Most High chastised, that he sent through the affliction, that he sent through adversity. It's a beautiful thing. It's a very beautiful thing, and it's a blessing. And we don't want to see it as grievous. This is Hebrews 7, 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation, was speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastened and scourges every son whom he receiveth. So don't um, don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise it. Don't hate that because that's a very beautiful thing. And that's what's going to help you. That is very same affliction and that very same adversity you're going through. It's going to help you be a better woman. It's going to help you bear more fruit. And something I notice a lot of times we pray for things. We pray for patience. We pray for endurance. We pray for faith. We pray for more things. But you're not going to get that just in a golden box with a blue ribbon on top. Talking about here you go. You got to go through that affliction to get that. You gotta go through something to get that. Every everything where um something worth having is not gonna be easy to get. So you have to go through that fire. So sometimes when we ask for patience, you're gonna be put through a trial so you can gain patience. If you want more endurance, you're gonna put through something you have to endure through to gain more endurance. If you want more faith, you're gonna be put through a test that tries your faith. So um that's just that's just plain. For whom are loving, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receiveth. So when we're going through these things, the most high, he loves us. He loves us. We're on his mind, and that's a blessing. He loves us. He wants the best for us. <laughs> if you endure chastening, you have a deal with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastens not? But if you be without chastening, or of our partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father's spirits and live? But they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present thing to be joyous, but grievous, nevertheless, afterward he yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So and at the moment that you're going through, it doesn't seem to be the best thing ever. But afterward it's gonna yield that peaceable fruit of righteousness unto you. Afterward you're gonna bear more fruit, afterward you're gonna be a better woman, afterward you're gonna learn. So 
Um, we're going to go through things in this walk, and you can't get the kingdom without much tribulation. That's Acts 14 and 22. So you got to expect that this walk is going to be tough. Acts 14 and 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. So we can't get the kingdom without much tribulation, without much adversity, much affliction. Um, and it's tough, but with Yahweh Shemashah, we can endure and overcome all things. We have to remember that. We have to win the mental battle first. Um, and so with that, I'm going to go to Revelation 3 and 19. And it reads, as many as I love are rebuke and chastity, and be zealous therefore and repent. So that's in red. That's Yahweh Shah. You know, we go through it because Yahweh Shemashah Shah loves us, and that's plain. And I'm going to go to 1 Peter 5 and 10. And it reads, But the God of our grace, who have called us into his eternal glory by Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strength, and sell to you. So these sufferings are to perfect us. Yahweh Shah, he went through suffering so it could perfect him. These sufferings are to perfect us, is to make us be better. Even Yahweh Shah went through it so he could be better. Although he was perfect, but he so he could be better. So he could be even more perfect. So we go through these things. We go through sufferings. We go through trial, tribulation, affliction. So it could make us perfect. So it could strengthen us. So it could settle us. So it could establish us through the spirit of Yahweh Shah. And I want to go to Job 23 and 10. And it reads, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So when we go through these afflictions, it's to bring up. We're, we come forth like gold. We come out shining. Um, and so I write to him, Father, it says, Except a man... For gold is tried in the fire and accept the man in front of his adversity. So we're like that gold being tried in the fire. You know, you put a penny, it might be dull, but when you put it in the fire, it come out shinier. It's the same with us. When we go through that affliction, we come out shiny. We come out of, when we go through affliction, when we come out of it, we're, we're now cleansed of those unwanted qualities. We've been rid of those unwanted qualities. We've been rid of those, unqual that, those unwanted traits. We come forth as gold. We come out shinier. We come out cleaner. We come out more pure. We come out white. So come on, we have to go through that affliction so that we may come forth out as gold so we can be shinier and, you know, um, more blameless through the spirit. It's all to help us be more blameless um, so we can be blameless in a day of Yahweh Shah when he comes back. If we don't ever go through affliction, how can we learn? How can we grow? How can we increase? So we have to change our mindset and see how this affliction is actually working together for our good and helping us be better. And though it's hard in the moment, but it's good, y'all. It's good. It's a good thing. It's good. It's good. Now I want to go to Daniel 11. Daniel 11 and 35. Um, okay. Daniel 11 and um, 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. So um, when we fall, it's to try us. You know, we go through things. So it, and it says... And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white. So we go through things and sometimes we fall, but that's to try us, that's to purge us and cleanse us so that we may come out white, so that we may become out more pure. We go through these things so we can learn, so we can be better. And it's just plain upon tables. It says, and some of them of understanding shall fall. So we're going to fall in this walk of just men, fall to seven times, rise up again. And sometimes when we go off, that's to help us learn. That's to help us come out more white. That's to help us be better. And all of these things are to help us be better. And when you think about it, we really have a merciful, loving God. Yahweh HaShem, that loves us enough to want us to be better. Because he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to. He could just. Allow us to be, of course, our verses is but as a filthy rag, but he can just let us stay where we are. But he loves us so much. He wants us to be better. He wants us to get the kingdom. He wants us to increase. And he wants us to learn. He wants us to grow. He wants this for us. And that's a very, very beautiful thing. And then I want to go to Isaiah 48 and 10. And it reads, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. So let's look at what the definition of refined means. It means remove impurities or unwanted elements from a substance. Purify, clarify, clear, cleanse. So it says, 
I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen in the front of thy affliction. So that is the most high. We know that all of these scriptures, the most high speaking through these prophets, he's speaking through these, uh, the men that wrote the, the scriptures. He's speaking through the servants of him that wrote these scriptures. So the most high says he's cleansed us, but not with silver, but with affliction. Refine means to cleanse, to remove impurities, to purify. So we go through that affliction to remove unwanted purities, to cleanse us, to purify us. How beautiful is that? So that affliction is to cleanse us, is to make us better, is to make us more whole, is to heal us, is to help us go harder, is to help us increase, is to help us see how we can do better, is to humble us down and show us what we need to work on. And that is such a blessing because the Lord, he could have us bugged out. He could have us thinking we ain't got nothing to work on. He could have us thinking we got it all together when we don't. But he humbles us down and shows us what we need to work on. He humbles us down and help us be better. Better. So it says, I have ref I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen in the furnace of affliction. So we go through affliction so we can be cleansed, so that we be purified. And, you know, that affliction, it'd be, it be tough, man. It'd be tough, you know. some It'd be real tough, especially when you face the temptations. But we have to remember through the spirit of Habashim, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthening us, Philippians 4 and 13. But um, now we're going to go to James 1 and 2. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse, time t diverse temptations. Knowing this, the trying of your faith work with patience. Let patience have a perfect work. They may be perfect and entire one and nothing. So we got to count it joy when we go through these temptations, when we go through these afflictions, you know, because the trying of our faith work with patience. When we're going through that, when we're going through those adversities, um, and it's trying our faith, it's also, you know, increasing our patience, helping us with our patience. So... And let's get down to verse 12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So, blessed are we that endure these temptations, that endure these uh, afflictions, that endure this adversity. You know, um, when we try, we're going to receive that crown of life, and we, if we continue to endure, most heart willing. So, um, I'm going to get like two more, and I'm going to close out. Pretty short sure video through the Spirit. This is 2 Maccabees 6 and 16. And it reads, and therefore he never withdraweth his mercy from us. And though he punish with adversity, yet doth he never forsake his people. So though the Most High cast us down, he does not only forsake us. Though he cast us down and we get punished through adversity sometimes. And, you know, we be going through it. Um, He doesn't forsake us. He's there and he's a pony of his right arm, his right hand. And let's get Psalms 37. You know, Psalms 30, yeah, Psalm 37 and 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. And though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. So though we fall and we go through it, the most like he's upholding us with his right hand. He, he has his arm out. He's giving us strength. So like that was Satan. That was Satan. Um, but though we go through it, the most high, he's upholding us with his right arm. He's giving us strength. You know, our strength comes from the Lord. That's Psalm 28 and 7. This is Isaiah 48 and 10, I believe. Um, behold, no. Isaiah 41 and 10. Isaiah 41 and 10, and it reads, For if thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, Yah will help thee, Yah will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So the Most High, He gives us strength. He's helping us, and he, He's upholding us with, with His right hand. So though we fall, and we feel like we're on our very last, we feel like we're on our last leg, we feel like we can't do it no more, the Most High's right there, giving us strength. The angels are rooting for us. The Most High's right there. He wants us to keep going, He wants to keep pushing. His arm is right there. So we just have to remember just to keep enduring. And I want to close it out with this. This is second Ezra's um, seven and 57. And it reads, then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle, which a man that is born upon the earth shall fight. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, choose thee life that thou mayest die. So at the end of the day, these afflictions that we go through, these temptations, it's the condition of the battle. This is, this is what it is. We're in captivity because we didn't keep the commandments of the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Al Shai. That's why we're in captivity. You know, we're going through these things because we didn't keep the commandments. So we have to just continue to endure and just continue to press toward the mark because if we want this kingdom, this is what we have to go through. There's no other way around it. You either want the kingdom or you don't. And if you want the kingdom, you will have to go through affliction because Acts 14 to 22, um... You gotta go through much tribulation to get the kingdom. Let's get it again. I had a little brain fart. Ooh. Um, let's just get it again though. Acts 14 22. Sorry. 
Acts 14 and 22, concerning conforming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. So we just got to continue in the faith because if we want this kingdom with much tribulation, though. So at the end of the day, this is what we have to go through because we didn't keep the commandments. Let's get that. This is Baruch 2 and 30. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people, but in the land of the captivities, they shall remember themselves and shall know that I'm the Lord that actually. That I'm the Lord their God, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of the captivity, and think upon my name, and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the ways of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people, and I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. That's not what I wanted, but I mean, through the spirit, we went there. So, look, we're in captivity. We're in captivity, and we just got to keep enduring so we can see that promised land. But I wanted Baruch. Um, uh, I wanted Baruch one and something. Let me just get um uh, um. Baruch 1 and 10. Yet we have not hearkened unto his voice to walk in the commandments of the Lord that he have set before us. And now, O Lord God of Israel, that has brought thy people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and high arm with signs and with wonders and with great power and has gotten us off a name. As appeared this day, O Lord our God, we have sinned, we have done ungodly, we have dealt unrighteously in all thine ordinances. Let thy wrath turn from us, for we are but a few left among the heathen where thou hast scattered us. So we're in captivity because we didn't keep the commandments of the Most High. So at the end of the day, if you want the kingdom, you have to keep enduring and you just have we just have to win the mental battle and we have to understand that we can do all things to you how shall strengthen us, but we can't see affliction like a bad thing because at the end of the day, that cleansing, that purging is to help you be better, is to help you come out as gold, is to help you come out white, is to help you come out more pure, is to help you learn, is to help you grow and increase. And it's a blessing because the most high doesn't have to send us through that. He could have us thinking we got it all together and stuff, but he puts us in a position where we're able to self-examine, we're able to see how we can do better. And that's truly a blessing for me, how about Shana Shai? Um, but playing upon tables, if we want the kingdom, we have to keep enduring. This is the condition of the battle. This is what we signed up for when we came into this walk. And we have to keep enduring. And we can do anything through how about Shana Shai. And remember to cleave unto the most high. I did the exhortation through the spirit yesterday. Just let us just know we have to cleave unto the most high because only the most high can do it. He's the only one that can heal us. He's the only one that can strengthen us. He's the only one that can get us through these times. He's the only one that can help us. So cleave unto the most high and continue to endure. Because if you want that kingdom, you've got to go through this. You know, but practice the fruits of the spirit and count it joy through this thing. Count it joy and think it not strange. Think it not strange because we're all going through it. We all have our own demons and battles. We have to work through our own storms. We have to work through but continue to endure. I love y'all. And I just wanted to get on here and just let y'all know that this affliction is to help us be better. It's literally to help us bring more fruit. And I'm going to, we're going to go back to John 15 and 2. We're going to go back. John chapter 15 and verse number 2. Not bad, right? John 15 and verse number 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So, when you bear that fruit, you're going to get purged, you're going to get cleansed, you're going to get humbled down, you're going to get broke down just so you can bring forth more fruit and be better. And remember, all affliction is not punishment, it's not judgment, but at the end of the day, it's all working together for our good. So, Lord willing, have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. Call it by Shemash, my Kalashai, Lord willing, I'll get edified. Shalom. Woke up this morning and I pray.